हे गाइस वेलकम बैक टू वन स्टॉप बायोलॉजी सो गाइस इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट मियोसिस तो लेट मी रिमाइंड यू दैट कवर्ड the other two topics of cell cycle and cell division so we covered the stages of cell cycle where we covered interphase then in the last video we have covered process phase right mitotic phase so guys before we start off with meiosis please do like the video and share it with your friends if you understand it completely and yes if you are new to the channel please do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get all the updates and guys your feedback is really really important to me so do not forget to comment on the videos and give your feedback whether you like it or you have any doubt so chalo let's start with the topic of meiosis so what we studied in mitosis and its significance is that it helps in you know uh, different type of uh, functions and roles of the uh, cell division right so basically the uh, upper layer of our epidermis it divides by mitosis the lining of our gut the blood cells it they divide by mitosis right in the same way if you uh, understand the reproduction part of you know living beings you will understand the reproduction of offspring by sexual reproduction it includes fusion of two gametes right so we get one gamete each from a male and a female and in sexual reproduction what happens is that both of these gametes are you know haploid that is one they have haploid set of chromosomes and they fuse to fuse together to form the zygote right so basically guides these gametes are formed from specialized diploid cells right so this kind of cell division that reduces the chromosome number by half right this results in the production of haploid daughter cells and this is nothing but meiosis so meiosis is what meiosis is reductional division reductional division so now remember that mitosis is what please do mention in the comments we have already studied it in the last video and if you have missed the last video please do go and check it out after this after watching this video so mitosis is something else that you have to mention in the comment meiosis however is reductional division so we, what it does is it basically halves it halves divides the basically the total number of chromosomes into two it reduces the chromosome number by half and that is why the daughter cells are haploid rather than being diploid right so basically meiosis ensures production of haploid phase in the life cycle of reproduce you know sexually reproducing organi organisms whereas what happens uh, is that the fertilization restores the diploid phase so what happens basically is that you have zygo you have gametes which is haploid so it is coming from diploid basically by reductional division it it is you know reduced by half and then again fertilization takes place fertilization takes place and you get the diploid zygote right so basically the uh, fertilization restores the diploid phase right so we have basically come across meiosis during gametogenesis in plants and animals right it leads to formation of haploid gametes now what are the key features of meiosis let's see that what are the key features of meiosis so the first one is that it involves two sequential cycle if you if you just you know read through these lines the first is that it involves meiosis involves two sequential cycle of nuclear and cell division right so the first one is meiosis 1 and the second one is meiosis 2 right but there is only one cycle for dna replication right now what happens in meiosis 1 so mini meiosis 1 is initiated after the parental chromosomes have replicated to produce identical sister chromatids at the s phase so basically again you know meiosis 1 starts when you when the 
DNA replication is done during the S phase, right? Now, meiosis involves pairing of homologous chromosomes and recombination between them. Remember, meiosis involves pairing of homologous chromosomes and recombination between them, right? Now, how many haploid cells you get at the end of meiosis 2? You get four haploid cells which are formed at the end of meiosis 2. So, basically it has two sequential cycles, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. And at the end of meiosis 2, you have four haploid cells. Right? So, basically if we talk about the meiotic events, it can be grouped under two phases. First is meiosis 1, second is meiosis 2. Now, what all stages will be there in both? It will be similar to what we studied in mitosis. You will have prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. It's just that now since there are two cycles, in case of meiosis 1, you will have prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1 and telophase 1. And in case of meiosis 2, again you will have two phase, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2 and telophase 2. Now let's do one thing. Let's you know, start off with meiosis 1 and see what all things are happening during the stages of meiosis 1 first, right? So, the first stage in meiosis 1 is prophase 1, right? Now, basically, this stage is the first meiotic division and it is longer and more complex. So, basically, if you compare the prophase of mitosis, Right? If you compare it with the prophase of mitosis, the prophase 1 of meiosis 1 is longer and more complex. And this is further subdivided into 5 phases. So, it is divided into 5 phases. Now, what are these phases? It is the first one is leptotene, second one is zygotene. Third one is Pachytene. Fourth one is Diplotene. And then you have Diakinesis. Diakinesis. Right? So these are the five phases of prophase 1. Now, let's see what happens in all these phases. So, during leptotene stage, the chromosomes basically become visible under the light microscope. And the compaction of chromosome continues through leptotene. Right? So, basically, the chromosomes are becoming more and more compact. And slowly, you are able to see these chromosomes under the microscope. Now, the next one is zygotene. So, during zygotene, what happens is that these chromosomes, they start pairing, right? These chromosomes, they start pairing up. And this process of pairing up is known as what? It is known as synapsis, right? And these Paired chromosomes are known as homologous chromosomes, right? So, basically, this stage, what does it indicate? This indicates that the chromosome synapsis is accompanied by formation of a very complex structure, which is known as synaptonemal complex. So, basically, these chromosomes are forming a complex which is known as synaptonemal complex. And this complex formed by a pair of synapsed homologous chromosomes is known as a bivalent or tetrad. It is known as bivalent or tetrad. Right? So, they are basically pairing of homologous chromosomes. Right now, what's happened? What what happens in pachytene? Right. So basically, it's a very short-lived stage, and during this stage, 
these bivalent chromosomes they appear as tetrad you can see them as tetrads right so this stage is characterized by appearance of recombination nodules you have recombination nodules so basically these are the sites at which crossing over between these non sister chromatids between these paired chromosomes right these chromatids of these homologous chromosomes happens now crossing over is nothing but exchange of genetic material between the two homologous chromosomes so basically they are exchanging the genetic material right now re remember guys that this crossing over is enzyme mediated process and the enzyme is known as recombinase recombinase right now this leads to recombination of genetic material on the two chromosomes so now the genetic material is two, two different genetic material is combined right between these chromosomes right now basically this recombination is completed by end of paketi right and now the chromosomes are linked at the site of crossing over and then we have the fourth stage beginning the fourth phase beginning which basically is nothing but now dissolution of this complex the synaptonemal comp complex and the recombined homologous chromosomes they basically start to separate from each other except for the site of crossovers right so there is an x shaped structure formed which is known as chiasmata chiasmata right so basically this if we talk about the oocyte of some vertebrates diplostein stage can last for months or years right and then we have the final stage of dikinesis now what happens is dikinesis that now the chiasmata which is formed is terminalized that is gone and then during this phase the chromosomes again are fully condensed and the meiotic spindle is assembled to prepare the homologous chromosomes for separation now there will be a process the next phase meiosis 2 sorry the metaphase 1 where now they are prepared for the chromosomes are prepared for separation so what happens is that by end of dikinesis the nucleolus disappears and the nuclear envelope breaks down right so basically dikinesis now from dikinesis the cells is beginning to transition to metaphase 1 right now what happens in metaphase 1 in metaphase 1 the bivalent chromosomes they align on the equatorial plate as we saw in the case of mitosis right so these bivalent chromosomes now align at the equatorial plate and the microtubules for from the opposite poles of the spindle they attach to the pair of homologous chromosomes right then it goes into anaphase 1 now in anaphase 1 what happens the homologous chromosomes start separating right so basically the homologous chromosomes are separating but the sister chromatids which are associated to the chromosomes they are intact right so they remain associated with the chromosome right so you see what is the difference from mitos mitotic anaphase right now then it goes into telophase 1 now what happens in telophase 1 the nuclear membrane and nucleolus reappear and cytokinesis follows and we have a dyad of cells right we have basically two cells with two you know twice the number of chromosomes now right so the stage between two meiotic division is basically known as interkinesis interkinesis and this is very short lived right so after interkinesis this these cells enter into prophase 2 which is similar than prophase you know which is similar than prophase 
right so here you will see the stages of my meios meio meiosis first right so let me show you what is happening through the diagram so in prophase 1 after all those five stages as in leptotene zygotene pachytene diplotene and dikinesis you have paired homologous chromosomes you have pair of chromosomes which are basically paired together they are homologous chromosomes paired together so here you see there's one pair here you, there is another pair right now in metaphase one what is happening is that they are aligning to a equator to equator then you have both the both you know these individual chromosomes which are moving towards the poles and then these are basically dividing into diets now what ha what is happening in prophase one is that these pairs of homologous chromosomes are exchanging their genetic material so if you see here and if you see here what is the difference you see here the one chromosome is shown in light blue and the other one is in dark blue if you see here you'll see that the light blue has a piece of dark blue chromosome and the dark blue one has a piece of light blue chromosome so basically they have exchanged the their genetic material during prophase one the same way is happening that the lighter shade of red has the darker shade of red small amount of genetic material of the other one and it is same with the other one so basically they have exchanged their genetic material during prophase one right now we have diets of cells we have two cells like this right now after entering prophase two of meiosis two what is happening is that it is basically initiated immediately after cytokinesis and it resembles a normal mitosis so what again would happen is that the nuclear membrane will disappear and chromosome becomes compact they enter into metaphase these chromosomes align at the equator and again the microtubule from opposite poles they'll form, uh, form spindle fibers and these spindle fibers will get attached with sister chromatids through kinetochores then again they'll enter into anaphase 2 now in anaphase 2 they'll be, they, these sister chromatids they'll start splitting from the centromere right they'll start splitting and they will move towards the two opposite poles and then again in telophase 2 the two groups or chromosomes they once again gets enclosed into the nuclear envelope and the cytokinesis follows which results into formation of tetrads of cells and you have four haploid daughter cells four haploid daughter cells right so if you now you know try to pick thing up from the entire video that i've made till now you will see that meiosis one in meiosis one what is happening is that you are getting four different set of chromosomes which have you know exchanged their genetic material and then these four uh, set of chromosomes are getting divided in the phase of meiosis 2 so meiosis 2 somewhat resembles to what we saw you know what happens in mitosis so meiosis 2 is the phase which resembles mitosis and there what is happening is basically that all the chromosomes are separating from each other and they are basically forming four haploid daughter cells so as, to, as you see here in prophase 2 what is happening now you have diets of cells you have two cells right so in one again they are connect getting connected with the spindle fiber the nuclear membrane is disintegrating then they go to metaphase in metaphase what happens they align at equator then again they go to anaphase now they split up and they start moving towards the poles right and then from there they enter telophase where they form four haploid daughter cells right so this is how we get 
four haploid cells in case of meiosis and in case of sexual reproduction always remember in case of sexual reproduction the gametes are formed through meiosis right now let's see what is the significance of meiosis now guys meiosis is a mechanism by which conservation of specific chromosome number of each species remember that conservation of specific chromosome number of each species is achieved and this is achieved across generations in sexually reproducing organisms that this basically is achieved across generations in sexually reproducing organisms so even though the process results in reduction of chromosome by half it also increases the genetic variability in the population from one generation to the next right now these variations basically are very very important for the process of evolution so basically through meiosis the that particular organism is getting diversity genetic diversity and which results in you know evolution in long term right so the major significance of meiosis is that the reproducing organisms they re achieve this specific chromosome number through the process of meiosis only so guys with this we have finished this important topic of meiosis as well i know it might be confusing for some of you so please let do let me know if you have any confusion or any doubt in your mind after watching this video please do let me know in the comments of the video or you can also message me your doubts over whatsapp the number is given in the description of the video and yes guys if you have understood this video very well please do not forget to like it and share it with your friends and yes if you are new to the channel please do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get all the notifications okay guys see you in the next video now from the next video we will be definitely starting with a new chapter take care thank you for watching this video bye bye